Hello and welcome to the Law Jawab Show, where we host formally informal conversations with one of the most prominent lawyers of the law fraternity. And today we are in conversation with one of the most committed and successful lawyers, not only as the one amongst women lawyer, but also a true leader. Follow the brief and the money will follow is her motto. She has been handling all types of litigation and law litigation work, including banking law, arbitration, company law, environment law, and family law. Awarded Best Mediation Award in 2017 and has also backed Karma Yogi Puraskar by Daily Deshdoot Group as the best women lawyer. Organized around 1000 legal aid literacy camps and participated in national and international conferences. She has also appeared in the federal courts of US. Please welcome Advocate Indraini Patni ma'am. Ma'am, we are honored to have you today. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, ma'am. Thank you so much for being here. I'm also very happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would like to know what uh, you have done your MA majors. You've mm. done in liter. You've done in your done your majors in literature. What made you come towards law? Yes, actually, I have done my MA in English literature and aesthetics, as you said, yes. from Bombay University. I have uh, done my diploma in music. from bombay university vocal classical i did my journalism from pune my certificate course i was writing as a uh, i was interested in creative writing so i was uh, uh, doing writing in the periodicals uh, but uh, somehow uh, right from the school days i wanted to become an ambassador by go- joining the indian foreign service okay hence i decided to go for it i joined the course in uh, pune university for is coaching clear my prelims also but while doing that i uh, admitted myself to the law course just to have more knowledge and when i was admitted to ils law college i had company of uh, very good students there the cosmopolitan ones they had different types of uh, ways of life and specially uh, they wanted to make a career in law i met uh, stalwarts like dr satyaranjan sathe dr uh, adwani and so on and so forth dr rao they uh, their insight and the way they uh, taught us law it was amazing like dr talekar was also one of the uh, very good uh, professors of mine so when i Uh, we we used to have discussions on current cases, uh, current happenings in law, and it was a kind of a social awareness which was created. We had legal aid clinics, so I thought that it suits my basic nature, hmm. and uh, I decided to take a law as a career, and I did not go for uh, further exams in civil services. Okay. Ma'am, your journey from Nasik to Pune to Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, can you please throw some light? Can you please take us towards those areas? <laughs> yeah. I after I studied law, uh, in 1983, I enrolled myself in Pune Bar. Like hmm. I was practicing there for some time under uh, my senior, Mr. S. L. Mehta. Thereafter, I got married and I was in Mumbai. And uh, while in Mumbai, I had a very good opportunity. to work with my mentor and a very intelligent uh, lawyer uh, ms kiran bhagalia i also had an opportunity to work with the organizations like hiranandani construction some real estate companies because of whom i could uh, study myself a lot i had to brief because i was their legal retainer hmm. i had to brief big stalwarts hmm. like uh, uh great uh, mr jet malani then dara zai wala sir rafiq dada sir and so on and so forth so i even madam rajni ayer who was a uh, very competent uh, senior advocate senior counsel in uh, from bombay high court so i could uh, uh, learn a lot through all my journey and then uh, i decided to accelerate and be in this profession forever and later on uh, myself and my husband we decided to settle down in nasik So after four or five years of experience in Mumbai, I came to Nasik and joined the Nasik Bar Association. Okay, that's a very lovely journey. Yes, ma'am. Your college days, you have done your law from ILS Law College, which is yes. one of the most profound law colleges yes. in the country today. Yes. Ah, uh, can you take us through uh, through those uh, years? How your college yeah. days were? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, it's my pleasure <laughs> to go to those days. Uh, 
the college life was full of uh, intellectual events full of entertaining events mm. we had lots of cultural events also and then specially we used to meet stalwarts like those who were involved in uh, law movement or law reform mm. movements like mm. dr vasudha dagam who are i remember barrister appa saheb pan so every every month or sometimes fortnightly also they would come they would uh, share their views on various topics then uh, we had uh, discussions we had a legal and social approach different kind of an approach innovative approach towards uh, law and uh, we had legal aid clinics we had to participate we had nss programs we had leader legal literacy camps in which the students were met to participate we also had the activities like muna model united nations assembly mm. which uh, uh, gave us insight into international law where we we were participating and uh, such events were there uh, and uh, it was quite enriching and enlightening life so because of which i could get a very different kind of approach towards law and they were very lovely days we had a cosmopolitan group they had different ideas about uh, uh, the, okay. the legal topics or the legal way of life which i could share ma'am uh, you uh, like when i we were researching i got to know that you have organized a lot of national conferences yes and uh, not like on particular topics you have been into the extra curriculars a lot can yeah. you tell us more about it yes uh, right from the beginning i had uh, interest in uh, organizing programs lectures and having a thought provoking atmosphere wherever i go maybe in childhood in my small town by name nipani which is a uh, on the border of karnataka and maharashtra Achha. or maybe in college life in pune or uh, after i became a lawyer uh and so it took a, took me to various opportunities which i was finding or sometimes the opportunities came just like that so when i learned that there is such an organization uh, by name all india federation of women lawyers uh, which was uh, founded by several women lawyers eminent women lawyers from the various states uh, i decided to go for the conference i visited uh, uh, different cities because there were different conferences and i could share uh, th- that uh, the very views with uh, women lawyers there was uh, asia women lawyers conference where i could meet different uh, uh, representatives from different countries and uh, how uh, the law uh, is used as a weapon in hmm. those countries uh, then i decided to go ahead in that and uh, then i wo- i i became a member there after i became a, a joint secretary and then yeah, so on yeah. and so forth and finally i was uh, elected or nominated i must say as a president of all india federation of women lawyers prior to that i was a state uh, federation lawyer uh, president in uh, uh, federation of uh, women lawyers in maharashtra so through which i had a platform through which i could just uh, promote these legal aid legal literacy activities and uh, legal aid and legal literacy not only for those who are the needy persons or common people but also for lawyers to empower women lawyers to empower lawyers in general and uh, to eradicate uh, the difficulties of uh, women and children by organizing the legal aid activities for them uh, so uh, we organized uh, Uh, conference on a large scale also for a betterment and a personality development of women lawyers to give them a platform we also did it for uh, various other activities for the legal literacy for students and junior advocates and also the legal aid act centers for uh, the advice free advice for the needy ones ma'am uh, with this journey what was your first case that you uh, independently ran or okay. took charge of uh, in pune and mumbai i could handle many cases uh, because i was associated do- with those companies and organizations uh, through which i could learn so much like because i was with uh, the mr hiranandani i could uh, do lot many cases of specific performance and you know relating to property law but when i came to nasik uh, there was a case where uh, one lady who was married to a government officer hmm. uh, who told her that he is already divorced and okay. he had a first wife and one son 
hmm. born and begotten from that wife hmm. and he showed her one uh, divorce date stating that i am divorced, divorced person so okay. i would like to marry you okay so this lady was from solapur both of them got married they had three children hmm. and this person uh, her husband he passed away in an accident so uh, after him he, because he was a government servant there were lot many dues uh, which uh, he possessed like gratuity was there the salary was there balance salary then other things were there those benefits she was entitled to and she applied for the succession certificate she was given the succession certificate but because she had some dispute with her previous lawyer uh, there was some pendency the matter came to me during which there was an uh, this uh, first wife she came to know about uh, all this episode she came and she challenged that succession certificate by filing a suit okay. and uh, uh, they were uh, the children and this lady they were all made uh, defendants in that suit and uh, that woman claimed uh, her share in the property of the deceased hmm. at that time this uh, lady came to me with her three children i had to defend her and uh, then on technical grounds we defended and also we stated that there was a marriage she was not guilty maybe then they de- the court uh, considered one point that it was not a legal divorce so this marriage was not a legal marriage she is not a legally wedded wife so what will be her rights hmm. so in that uh, particular matter uh i remember uh, j- j- the j- honorable judge mr paratwar was there uh, uh he uh, uh he framed some issues which were very important and uh, whether the second wife is entitled for maintenance in the lifetime of the husband and also after, after him his in his pro- estates and secondly whether illegitimate children are entitled for the equal share in the property okay. of the husband and in 1983 the section 16 of the hindu marriage act was interpreted in one of the bombay high court judgment and uh, it was uh, that it is not because it is not a fault of those children they will be at par with the natural children irrespective of the fact that whether they are born on begotten out of invalid marriage hmm. or not or void marriage or not and the lady of course there are so many other cases like uh, one dagubai case is their famous judgment yeah. which says that uh, the second wife or uh, um, uh, uh, the wife who is not legally wedded wife will be entitled for the maintenance from the estate of the husband so accordingly we uh, 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 i did a very hard work on, on those uh, cases and uh, the accordingly the order was passed and later on then there was a compromise and everybody got their share and <laughs> they were okay. happy even in the motor accident claim uh, all of them got the equal share okay yes ma'am we uh, know that you were the first person in nasik to get a dna test done for a particular case yeah so that's what was that, uh, that that was told to me that in nasik such test had not happened before in yeah. the court i don't know but uh, i okay. uh, what has happened what had happened is that i used to travel to mumbai for my cases so i had met one lady who was a re- officer in the reserve bank of india hmm. then one a uh, fine morning she came to my office in nasik and she said she has a sister and she has some problem and she has read uh, some article which says that paternity can be proved by uh, DNA. doing dna test yeah. then the story was this her sister and her neighbor a boy uh, they were in love with each other from childhood right from school days they used to attend the same classes at all and uh, uh, nobody knew this at home then uh, they uh, this fellow wa- wanted to go to loni for uh, further education he came to her and he said that now we cannot marry because our castes are different and uh, from uh, my parents may not uh, immediately agree so let us go and uh, get married at rambakeshwar so they went and they uh, they performed some vidhi they said that their marriage is done he told her that marriage is now over so we can have the married life secretly then they went somewhere they had a relationship and later on he went away for his further education 
then this woman she this girl she became pregnant hmm. she said that uh, uh, now we have to tell uh, uh, at home and hmm. uh, we will tell uh, we will ask them to uh, get us married or whatever and uh, uh, so that she will be safe he said that he is not interested in anything he said this uh, i don't agree that uh, there is anything from me uh, from in your side. womb from Asha. my side so l- you may uh, uh, abort the child and uh, we are not going to be connected with each other uh, uh, hence forward that time the family of uh, this woman uh, they uh, supported her the sister supported her and uh, because by the time he said absolutely uh, point blank uh, he refused by that time it was 7 months for her okay. then they decided to just keep that child and uh, after the child was born she wanted to file a case against him and get the paternity declared etc then i took it as a challenge we filed the case uh, we uh, asked so asked for restitution of conjugal rights presuming that there was a valid marriage then we also said that uh, the child should be declared because he is denying as a uh, Uh, child father. of this father this person and then subsequently be that time we had not asked for any maintenance or anything of that sort but she just wanted her right to be declared because it was not an illegitimate child hmm. then uh, for that we had to call uh, the proper witnesses the commissioner was appointed uh, the child and the parents they went for dna test to hyderabad uh, at uh, virological institute because it was uh, at that time only at hyderabad and uh, it was done the dna report came in favor of my client but it was to be proved so uh, we had uh, called the witness that is uh, the dr rao he was uh, uh, the famous ex scientist over there and with uh, his deposition that report was proved and uh, the paternity was declared uh, okay. later on uh, uh, like uh, the decree was passed in our favor favor of my client uh, later on they filed an appeal appeal was also dismissed and finally there was a compromise where he declared that uh, there was uh, uh, like uh, marriage the child is his but he uh, they don't want to stay with each other because my client did not want to live with such a person who had given her so much of agony and finally there was divorce by mutual okay. consent and the matter was settled in this manner ma'am in this entire journey what was the most turning point what was the case that was a proved to be a turning point for your life to tell you the truth i have tried all types of subjects and i have successfully uh, uh, like uh, uh, done my work in the field of property law maybe rent act cases or uh, like specific performance cases or even arbitrations but i i like to uh, even motor accident cases i like to go and work in different kinds of fields it's i'm not stick to any particular even banking law and securitization i have done many yeah. but i am also very much fond of environment protection and uh, that movement so uh, there were uh, uh, some cases from nasik going on in the green tribunal at pune national green tribunal uh, that uh, there was a uh, in uh, uh, there was a matter relating to godavari pollution which was already filed and uh, some orders were obtained by the petitioners we had to execute those orders and for execution of those orders i had to file an execution petition so i filed that execution petition the petitioner was lalita shinde hmm. i also filed one more matter uh, like uh, dispute uh, in uh, green tribunal uh, regarding the one trambakeshwar case there are three uh, places villages kojuli uh, bilmar and one more they were uh, like they, there were was a group gram panchayat where there was one place which was a scenic place and which was a part of western ghats where uh, these uh, um, there was a yard like uh, the cattle and all used to go there for the purpose of uh, their uh, ha huh. so 
what happened is that the Trambakeshwar municipality decided to have a garbage depot at that particular place, which was a decision taken by them despite the report of the environment uh, uh, department from the Pune Engineering College. And uh, uh, there were so many other aspects that some NOCs were not taken and all that. So for uh, to protect that environment, because they were all Adivasi villages, hmm. there were there were some Adivasi ashram schools around. There was a tributary of Vaitarna River, which was also flowing from that particular place. So we wanted to avoid pollution of all those, and uh, then we filed this dispute, and uh, we got an order, and the uh, this garbage depot was not to be done there and uh, it was shifted somewhere else we also alleged that they were not being shifted to the other vacant places which are available because those plots were held by some politicians and some influential persons okay. so the uh, green tribunal uh, took into consideration all these aspects and then that garbage depot thing was removed and there were many other findings given relating to such kind of natural uh, uh, places and uh, where the there should not be pollution and what care has to be taken by the authorities. That was widely reported in uh, various districts in papers of Pune, Nasik and other places. Of course, there were workers like those uh, who are working for the environment protection. They had contributed a lot for the purpose of and also those Adivasi people who came forward and filed this petition. Hmm. But I could use my legal knowledge and my efforts for the purpose of environment protection. So that was a turning point in my life because I got to know another aspect of law and I got to, though I theoretically I know, practically I could uh, uh, put my efforts into it. And as far as the execution petition is concerned, the moment the, execu the notice of the execution petition was given to the concerned authorities, certain things were done and complied with. Ma'am, being a woman lawyer, in the city of Mumbai is not a very difficult task, but in a city like Nasik, uh, there are a few challenges that you have to go through. That yes. Were there any specific challenges that you had to face or was it not what we think it is? You know, it is very difficult and hard for a woman to be successful in her career. Balancing home life, family life and career is not difficult for her. She is a multitasker. But what happens is that in Pune, in Mumbai or even in Pune, maybe because I was not working independently, hmm. I was working with somebody, hmm. I did not face or uh, the value over there is something different and uh, merit is recognized hmm. there. But uh, when I came to Nasik, I thought that the, the yes, the gender bias exists. Hmm. There were difficulties because... Uh, uh, there were uh, some comments on even women judges that uh, some lawyers used to say that the days have come now that we have to appear before the women judges. Mm -hmm. uh, there were also uh, like uh, some kind of typical attitudes that women lawyers, if they have come here, they should do some bank cases or they should uh, do maintenance cases or family law cases and they cannot uh, take up any other subject. And... Uh, they are not competent. The litigants used to feel that how can they entrust this particular matter to a, to a woman lawyer, whether she will be able to do it or not. Hmm. So all those things were there. Even gender bias did exist. It exists till today. Uh, but what I used to think is that whether it is proper to uh, like take it as a hurdle. Of course, we have to fight it out by merit, by showing that as a woman you are not asking for any excuses because I am a woman lawyer I will not uh, come on this day and that day and give me adjournment not like that so all these things I had kept in my mind and I always remember that I am having the merit I am also having a law degree as my male counterpart is having so uh, my merit is the only answer so okay. accordingly the, of course, the gender bias exists, it still exists, but uh, I, I can tell you that uh, I have uh, dammed the mountain, uh, dashed the mountain and dammed the river and uh, I have proceeded further and every woman lawyer should do that uh, so that uh, 
uh, all these things will decay one time. So uh, well, I'm waiting, it. waiting for that day that uh, <laughs> that jailers. In fact, and, we are somewhere, uh, somewhere closer to that journey. Uh, I think so because uh, jealous and gender bias has to be eradicated, and uh, sometime I will let you know that how it has to be done and how it could be done because sanction is also necessary, not only the social reforms. <laughs> That's really nice. And that's very in- inspiring, rather. Yes. Uh, now that we have an inspiring uh, figure, but you must also be having some inspiration in your life, you yes. motivational figure that you follow. Is there any specific person or a yes, lady? Yes, there are so many persons, but my senior Mrs. Kiran Bhagalia, hmm. who was an independent and intellectual lawyer, and she has... Uh, uh, done all such sorts of cases in uh, her career in the high court and uh, she is uh, counsel for so many institutes and the way she used to look after law and she used to do the hard work I have always seen her and she is my role model then um, uh, after I came to Nasik my uh, my guru uh, uh, Gorwadkar sir senior Gorwadkar yes. then uh, uh, Mr. M. R. Sathe, C. S. L. Deshpande, I have learnt a lot from them. Even Advocate Toshniwal also, the way he used to cross-examine, we used to observe and we used to feel that we should also do, I, I should also have that kind of a skill. And uh, because you were mentioning to me that whether you have any difficulties as a woman, so I remember when Kiran Bedi said, uh, he, she came to Nasik for some function and one girl asked the same question to her. She said that... Uh, I don't consider myself as a woman officer. I consider myself as a competent uh, police officer, a cop, a competent cop. And uh, I just proceed. In, uh, so I don't be indulge myself or involve myself in making parathas and, uh, you know, pleasing everybody. I will toast or I will just go ahead and march <laughs> forward. So that I remember and I will always remember it. Ma'am, apart from this, there are a lot of uh, funny incidences that happen in court that ekada client does to or something uh, funny that happens. We call that as courtroom drama hmm. or something like that. Have you ever in, uh, experienced something like this? There are so many courtroom dramas, especially in family court <laughs> like this, you know, like in the family court or in family matters, uh, whenever the spouses come and they face each other, it is something which everybody should experience the way <laughs> they look at each other, they try to, you know, um, fight with each other. And then uh, because after so many days, they come uh, again against each other and then they feel that uh, they should do something. They should attack each other <laughs> by words or by verbally or something else. And especially whenever there is a, a, a problem about child access, this fight becomes severe like they treat child as a property all of them and the spouse who is having the child does not want to give access to the uh, hmm. uh, other spouse and then there are uh, some fights and then tanna asa vatat asta ki hai na khau ka ghiru ek me kana so it becomes difficult to control them but when they go for counseling also the counselor is also told the big long story and then of course the counselors they are patient to hear all those things mm. and then uh, this happens uh, i have so many such uh, matters wherein i had to control the clients and ask them to go out of the courtroom so okay. that the court uh, work should not be disturbed uh, there sometimes it were there were some incidents like uh, um, because of uh, some adverse remarks one spouse has uh, slapped another spouse in front of court mm. and uh, uh, and another you are saying that funny incidents to so many they happen the way they talk to each other and you know the jokes happen uh, by such comments uh, there is uh, one client of mine I mean uh, he had uh, uh, married thrice hmm. oh so uh, and uh, twice he got divorced hmm. and he came to me for third divorce <laughs> <laughs> so okay. he is a businessman and uh, he married third time uh, uh, a wife, uh, a beautiful girl, and uh, she was also divorced once. Hmm. Then they had, uh, they, he, she could not get along with her. According to him, she is adulterous, and according to him, 
she was trying to just snatch his money okay. and he was uh, she wanted to marry him only for the sake of money she does not want a companion and all that mm. then after uh, filing the the suit the he came to my uh, first of all at the time of counseling and all he came in a red dress full red dress trousers red <laughs> shirt red shoes and uh, he went and faced the counseling okay so everybody in the court was wondering ki, what is this and even counselor was wondering ki, why all this Hmm. then later i later on i came to know about his explanation then when they came before the court in the court attendance he came in white full white dhoti shirt uh, <laughs> <laughs> cap um, and uh, stood before the court with uh, uh, gandha on his forehead and all that Achha. then uh, the court said that uh, this is the third time you are <laughs> going for a divorce so why why don't you patch up because this is the uh, all these things can be met with you can continue the counseling and all both of you can stay together you can have a child also later on he said no 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 this woman just see how shabbily she is dressed her dressing up itself shows that she is cruel she is adulterous she is falana falana and look at me i am so pure <laughs> the dress i am wearing काही डाग नाही आहे माझ्या ड्रेसवर आणि माझ्या कॅरेक्टरवर इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स माय कॅरेक्टर ऑल्सो सो आय एम आय कॅन नॉट स्टे विथ सच काइंड ऑफ अ वुमन सो इट इज बिकम इम्पॉसिबल फॉर मी टू लिव्ह विथ हर देन द कोर्ट सेड दॅट इट इज नॉट गोईंग टू वर्क आउट सो बेटर यू प्रोसीड फर्दर अँड डू वॉट एव्हर यू वॉन्ट लेटर ऑन वी स्टील कंटिन्यूड सम एफर्ट्स सो दॅट यू नो देर विल बी अ डिवोर्स बाय म्युच्युअल कन्सेंट ॲट लिस्ट इन्स्टेड ऑफ गोईंग ऑन फॉर द ट्रायल then uh, after some time there was a meeting held in my chambers then he came in blue dress the full <laughs> blue color blue shoes again and uh, uh later uh, then there was uh, some meeting and uh, we could uh, settle uh, like some terms of settlement were agreed and finally the matter was compromised but later on he told me that one astrologer had asked him to dress up in that manner Uh, well, for each and every occasion and go <laughs> he said because he did that um uh, he the compromise uh, was possible and finally she got he got rid of that lady actually <laughs> our efforts for counseling and uh, settlement and convincing the other side lawyer they were not important according to him it is because of the astrologer, astrologer. <laughs> such kind of funny people and uh, you know drama we do face so when uh, these dramas that you see in court room and when you see it in movie do you try to correlate movie madhe bagat astana you point out ki no this is wrong this is right do you like doing that also no actually there are there may be handful of movies where they have so, shown some uh, some sense you know as far as legal thing is concerned yeah exactly there uh, there are some mohan joshi hazir ho one movie one movie was there where they had depicted the true life uh, of lawyers Uh, and then this jolly llb and all uh, up to some extent i am not saying 100% but most of the movies the court scene is an entertainment only because yeah. <laughs> uh, without following any law without following any books they go on giving speeches and Definitely. you know uh, so <laughs> that is that you have to take into consideration uh, not as a law as, as fun as fun and there are some realistic movies like article 3 let's say 375 yes, ipc 375. Uh, such cases are there where they have shown certain things that one But point of like view has to, been shown as a uh, when you are watching a movie when you see a courtroom uh, scene and you're like no this is not how it is supposed to be done this is how it's supposed to be done do you like pointing out such things do you like is that why you no, like no, watching such movies that is because more? you know when somebody asks me like my family members or someone else friends and all हे बरोबर आहे का ग हे असंच असतं का तुमच्या इथे देन आय टेल दॅम दॅट नो इट्स नॉट लाईक दॅट बट दे हॅव टू डॅमेटाईज अँड दे हॅव शोन इट इन दिस मॅन मॅम वॉट एल्स वॉट आर अदर ऍक्टिव्हिटीज दॅट यू इंडल्ज अपार्ट फ्रॉम लॉ अँड एव्हरीथिंग वॉट आर अदर ऍक्टिव्हिटीज दॅट यू इंडल्ज युअर सेल्फ इन दॅट इज माय मेन पॅशन इज म्युझिक ओके So I have learned sing and play music. Yeah, I learned classical music from my childhood. Wow. I have a like a degree diploma also uh, with me uh, in classical music. 
and uh, i have been performing under uh, banner of abishkar when trust is there which i have only formed uh, like uh, all over india i have performed and on different light classical music uh, semi classical light music ghazals etc we are handling wow. and uh, uh, we were trying to uh, uh, like uh, propagate classical music amongst youngsters by uh, giving a performance based on classical music with uh, light songs which are enjoyed by young persons and how it is related to that uh, classical music all those uh, things because you must have uh, now watched the new uh, yes. web series bandish bandits in yes, which yes. the same thing has been depicted uh, yeah. which uh, uh, which will uh, uh, give knowledge of our royal heritage of music yeah. to youngsters Definitely. So uh, that is uh, my passion, and it will remain forever. <laughs> <laughs> We look forward for more yes. such things, ma'am. So this was a fun conversation with Advocate Indraini Patni, ma'am. Stay tuned for the next part where ma'am will be sharing a token of wisdom on her area of expertise. Stay tuned. Stay lojawab.